All right, my G. All right, so what's up, y'all? This is Lockout Man coming at you guys again with another podcast for this evening, <laughs> part two. I told you guys my guy was going to give me a call, to, you know, as soon as he got, I mean, as soon as he touched down right quick. But uh, like I said before, I uh, wanted to ask him, uh, uh, you know, get his thoughts and ideas being that he's a trainer. So, What's up, guys? Let me bring my dude on right quick. My man, D Nitty, Darren, the night driver. What's going on, my D? I mean, my G. What's going on, What's going on bro? How you doing? Man, I can't call it. I can't call it, man. Again, again, tell these people who you are and where you come from, my brother. <laughs> uh, I'm from New York. Uh, my name is D or Darren. Uh, I'm actually a trainer at a Salt Lake Terminal for night transportation. I, I do the road testing too in some orientation classes whenever I'm in the terminal. But uh, yeah, pretty much I, I train regularly, nonstop, one after another. But in between, like if I'm in the office, I'll do the road testing for experienced and non-experienced drivers. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. And how long you been? Yeah. How long you been with night? I'm, I'm in my fourth year right now. I, it'll be it'll be four years. Before you, they just did a review on me. I got, four, I'll be four years in November, and I got four hundred fifty thousand miles already in that time. Already, so you, yeah. you, you, you drove all over so far. Did you, did you touch all forty eight yet, or, or how many states that you haven't touched yet? I hit every state and Canada once by accident. <laughs> you say, no, hey, 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 wait, you, you went up into Canada. <laughs> But you said it was by accident. By, yeah. What, what <laughs> happened? Was, because I I seen a uh, YouTuber that says that he went up into Canada by accident too. But what happened? So I was up on the ninety. You know where the Niagara Falls uh where it splits and it goes in Niagara Falls. Right. I don't know if I wasn't. I don't know. Man. My GPS told me to go that way. I wasn't even paying attention. I was trying to stay down. Dude is retarded. So I. I started noticing stuff I'd never seen before. I'm like, this is crazy. And I come through here. I've been doing this for a long time. I don't know this place. You know what I mean? I'm like, am I doing this right? And I was just tripping. I was already committed because where I was, is there's no turning back. You know what I mean? You start seeing like a rock cliff and, and the wall. I'm on some bridge. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Right. And then I ended up, I seen like a toll booth. And I seen one sign that says, uh, last chance for U-turn, no trucks. I'm like, damn. I'm, I'm all screwed right now. You say so, last like, like, chance. <laughs> you say it's like basically it says last, last turnaround, but no trucks allowed, but no trucks permitted. You know, so like any car that didn't want to go over the border basically got an opportunity to go. I didn't, you know. So I went up to the toll booth, but it was actually a border patrol, and I'm like, hey, listen, I was like, I don't want to go over the border. I just want to kind of like do a U-turn. You know what I mean? Right. And he's like, well, you're going through the border now. I was like, damn it. <laughs> So luckily I had a passport, which helped a little bit. But then he asked me for a, um, see, this is unfamiliar to me because I don't go over the border. Right. It's, it's something called an ACE, an oh, ACE card. A what? A what a, card? It's called an ACE ACE card. I might have it wrong, but he said you have your ACE slip or whatever, and that means like American Customs, whatever. You know what I mean? So like right. every every load that goes through the, you know, over the border has to go through a customs. Um, they have one in Calaxico. They have them all next to the border now. Basically, take take your load. They'll take everything out. They inspect it thoroughly, and they rework it, and they certify it that it's that it's safe and there's no drugs, guns, or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. I went through their customs, and then they give you an A slip or something like that. I could be a little off, but uh, you're supposed to have that with you, and then your company's going to notify the border that you will be arriving. So they're expecting you anyways. You, you know you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So I learned that through experience. I didn't even know. Like I had no idea. So. So I had guys like listen. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I didn't mean to interrupt. They uh, uh oh no, I didn't mean I to interrupt because this is a good ass story. <laughs> <laughs> so man, this is a big mistake in my part. But anyways, I, I pull. I, so I pulled through. He goes, listen, you got, you're gonna meet an officer, and this dude is all tacked out. Like he had bulletproof vest, machine gun, everything. He goes, you need to go over here into this bay, uh -huh. back up. And I was like, all right, no problem. You know, anything you need. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And then uh. So I back him to the bay, and there's two officers, you know, all geared up. And he's like, listen, any guns, drugs, or anything in this truck? I said, no. Right. We're going to search this truck. I said, no problem. <laughs> so did they did they, like, do a, did, did they do a thorough search? I mean, they literally got oh. inside of the truck to do a search? 
Well, I opened the door. No, they were going to search the whole thing, everything, like inside and out, like not not messing around. And then, uh, wow. So he's looking at me. He goes, he goes. Listen, we're going to go through your whole truck, the inside, the back. He's like, what do you, what do you can? I said, uh, I got recycled paper. I'm like, you can open it up if you want to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, do what you got to do. Okay. I was like, I just literally just wanted to turn around. So then he goes, you got no guns, no drugs, no nothing on you. I said, I don't have anything, none of that. I was like, whatever you need to do. You have full permission to do whatever you want, like that. And he goes, listen, I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not going to waste my time. He's like, I believe you. You don't look scared at all. <laughs> he goes, just follow me. I'm not going to waste my time searching anything. He goes, you're going to get one freebie. He goes, since you never did this before and we ran your name and you have a good record, he goes, he goes, uh, just follow me. We're going to go over the tracks. He goes, New York might not be so nice to you when you go back in because cause, uh, they could find you too. You get a big fine for this. You know, wait, you so he, just just by off just by just by mistake, you you get a fine just for going over the border by mistake. Yeah, I mean, unless you're just trying to scare me, I have no idea, bro. So yeah. oh, okay. I can't I can't tell you for sure because he says and they, New York said the same thing. Like when I went over there, he goes. So the guy is like, you know, just follow me. I follow once I got over this little tracks and I went back to where the New York border check is and I went in there. And it's still American border check, but it's New York side. Right. So I pulled up, and he goes, what's going on? And, and the officer told, the Canadian officer told the New York guy, he goes, listen, he made a mistake. We're just doing a U-turn. We can do what you got to do with him. But it was his first time. That's why we let him go. You know, so okay. New York looks at me and goes, you got identification on you? He says, yeah. And I gave him my ID. I have a New York ID. So he looked at it. He's like, oh, you're one of us. You get out of here. Just like that. I was like, <laughs> no doubt. Word up. <laughs> So they, so they was like, so they was like, hold up, this, this dude is a, a New Yorker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, what happened? I go, dude. I was like, I never come through up here. I, you know, I was like, this is my first time even going over the border. He goes, listen, don't do it again. He's like, you're one of us. Guy, get out of here. Just don't do it again. Because if you do it again, you have a problem. Wow. There are no problem. Wow. Straight up. So, I mean, there's so, definitely going to be some type of repercussion. So what did what did Knight do? I mean, did Knight do anything to you as far as as far as the, uh, going up nah, there? They laughed at that. They were laughing. I was the laugh that oh, day. So you said <laughs> so you say they laughed that off, huh? <laughs> yeah, and that, Knight's not so strict. Like I mean, like when it comes to their drivers, their first intention is to protect their drivers because you make money for them. It's a different ball game. That's why I mess with Knight. So. Night, night's always been good to me. Night's always took care of me. I make like my 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 mortgages are expensive. I live in New York City, so like right. if I wasn't making money, I wouldn't be here. You know what I mean? So, and I if you treat me like if you treat me like a retard, I'm gonna have a problem with you too. Like I take it personal. So right, they've right. always been good. I've se- I've seen drivers. There's a driver. His name is Dave. I don't want to shout out last names, but right, he got you a new know. truck, million million milers. He uh. You know, you get a brand new truck with my uh, night. If you get if you do a million miles, they say what truck you want, any you know model, color, whatever, and they trick it out for you and they give it to you. That's a, a gift. That's a million miler. So he just got his million mile truck. He parts it. You know, Warm Stutter, Wyoming. Do you uh, know Warm Stutter? Uh uh-uh. There's a Loves there. Uh uh-uh, I'm not. Well, it's kind of like on a hill. They have a big. They have a separate lot where you can park. Okay. So he just drove. He drove over there and jumped in his truck, parked it, and then. Got up to go, you know, got up to go get his clothes, take a shower and everything. And next thing he knows, he's rolling down the freaking hill and went through a fence and crashed his truck. Like, he forgot to set the brakes. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. And that's serious. Like, to do that, and they didn't fire him. So, what? Well, I should say something about night. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. So, so, so yeah, man. I, so, I got a, I got a, I got one of your, I got one of your pictures up on, uh, on my green screen so the people know who I'm talking to right quick. That's my dude right there. Um, so night, man, you know, I made the call tonight, uh, and, uh, me and you went back and forth in, uh, in the, um, in the text messages, uh, about that particular call, uh, without going, what, without going in too much detail, what, what do you think that the young lady left out on, uh, on, on her, on when she was explaining, uh, night transportation to me? All right. Uh, well, there used to be a. I, I was wrong actually. One of the things. The one thing I was wrong about is the, the sign-on bonus. The sign-on bonus they used to. They just ended it like a week or two before you did this. Okay. And I didn't know because if, if you did if you transferred from another job mm-hmm. and you left another job, they give you a transfer 
uh, bonus basically because you left. You know, so they, they hook you up like fifteen hundred. It's not major, you know what I mean, but it's, it was something. You know what I mean? Okay. But uh, but one thing she failed to explain was the money. Uh, the cents per mile. All right, so you're on a probation period for the first thirty thousand miles. Once you get off your truck, uh, the trainer's truck, and you get your own truck. Once you get your thirty thousand miles of by yourself experience, you bump up automatically to a minimum base pay of forty cents a mile for a beginner. Okay, so you won't be getting any less than forty cents. She just said thirty five like it's a like it's a complete sliding scale, it's not. If you if you so that's the smallest you're gonna get paid and then every hundred thousand miles you drive you get an automatic bonus for for you get a penny bonus. So every hundred thousand miles, boom, you get a penny. And you just keep increasing it until you hit fifty cents and then it takes two hundred miles to get a bonus. Okay. No bonus you you'll keep going until you hit fifty eight cents a mile, sixty you know, whatever. But mm-hmm. uh the sliding scale, the sliding scale from, and I think I sent you a picture of it. The sliding scale, so like, any trip that's over five hundred thousand miles, you'll get your base pay, your minimum base pay is forty thousand. I mean forty thousand, forty cents. Sorry, I'm retarded. Right. And then, if you do three hundred miles, you're gonna get paid more because you know it's not that long of a trip, and you're gonna waste time unloading it or whatever it is. So they 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 make up for it. They'll give you like, if you're getting forty, it'll be like forty five, forty three. I'm not sure. I gotta look at the scale. Right. And then if you do anything under that, it's like almost fifty cents a mile. You know what I mean? Okay. So it's only for short trips. And if you do a long trip, you get your minimum base pay. You know, but people think like, oh, I'm gonna be stuck at thirty six cents a mile for for a year. That's not true. It, it should take you about two and a half months to finish that if you hustle. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So thirty thousand miles goes quick. You know, that that's one, that's one of the issues I, I had with her. Oh, okay. But it seemed like she didn't want to talk to you either, and that's another thing I didn't like. You know, like she was like, yeah, she, she's, she like, was trying oh. to she was trying to uh, push me off the push me off the phone before you know I can get uh, everything. She, but she, she like I said, I think I gave I think I rated the call a, a seven or eight or something like that. I think I'm not I'm not. If sure. If you want to do the experience side, you should talk to Jenna because Jenna. Jenna's cool to talk to. It's like talking to me. Like she's down. She don't. She don't give a crap. Like she likes that. You know, she's cool. We like her. All right. She knows her stuff. So. Well, next time, uh, next time I'll make the call to uh, make the call tonight again. I'll definitely uh, will call up Jenna. Shout out to Jenna. We don't know if she actually will see this, but she probably. She's will. seen she your probably. the other one. I showed it to her. Oh, you showed it to her. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much, brother man. I do appreciate that. All right. So let's I get. I my safety. I. I I show my safety department your wrecked videos too. Ah <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, man, so thanks a lot, man. Speaking of safety, man, you know uh, the company that I'm rocking out for, uh, they just uh, they just did their quarterly their uh, their safety they they you know they they safety mile quarterly or some shit like that, and mm. I am like like number one in the entire company of safe miles driven for the uh oh, nice. for the, i think it's the fourth quarter of uh 2019 so so yeah yeah i i was very surprised at that that they uh that they that they said that i was like number one so no pat on the back because i i, I hate accolades i really do i really do but you i don't get I, bonuses yeah, we get I, yeah, I yeah, I get a bonus. Okay. Uh I should I should be seeing something uh I should be seeing something soon. So that's that what was told to me. I should see something soon. Don't know when, but they said it was going to be soon. So check this out, man. Being that you're a trainer for night, all right? This guy that's in the Facebook group. Hold on right quick. Let me bring it up. <laughs> Uh, he's he uh he has a question. He questioned that. I think this is. I'm not sure. Oh, U.S. Express. Okay, so this is from the U.S. Express drivers group. So let me explain, y'all. I'm a former U.S. Express driver, so that's why that's I am still. Uh. That's why I am still in the group. And I think I was a U.S. Express driver when we met back in the day. Correct. Okay, okay. So that's what I have you locked in my phone as Sean US Express. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the new company name as soon as we hang up, man. But <laughs> but uh this guy no, this guy says um he says question. He says, How does all major trucking companies 
inspect new hires or recent graduates to keep new drivers if their trainers scream and yell at them. I mean, yell at the new drivers. Okay. Now, There's being, something I have a. Uh, now, gotta go finish. Now, Sorry. being that you are being that you are a trainer, how do you? <clears throat> I, I don't know. What, what's your experience with you being the trainer? All right. Well, me as a trainer, I'm also, you know, I, I've been certified to, to train for England. Like, I went through a, a school certification so I could do my road testing and stuff like that. Right. Um, so I'm a little different. Like, I, I, everyone's got a learning curve. Everyone's got, you know, the way they like to be taught. But one thing, see, in, in night actually comes to me a lot. I actually work with the training department to fix our trainers, too. So, like, I'm very involved in night. But uh, one thing I have a problem with is any trainer who yells at their student – um, the only thing you're accomplishing is that you're making more stressful environment. He's more worried about you. And then not only that, he's going to be hating your guts while he's trying to learn. That's one thing. And you don't get anywhere. See, me, as a, I have to sit down with my students and say, listen, I am not your enemy. If I tell you to do something, all I care about is that you try, you know, and if you don't do good, no problem. As long as I see you putting effort in trying to understand what I'm teaching you. Don't get yelled, you know, I don't want, vice versa. I don't want the student yelling at me, and I don't want to yell at the student. I come from a hostile environment, bro. You yell at me, you're not going to get a good act, a reaction. You know what I mean? That's one right. thing. So I tell them that, right. too. So, like, you're a New I'm, I'm a fighter, bro. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you don't you don't want I, I got a dog that will attack you if you even get stupid with me. Like, <laughs> straight up in my truck. So, like, that's, you know, no, I'm, just, I'm serious. Like, but, uh, you know, but any train, don't, trainers that yell are unexperienced. That's one thing. That's the first sign of unexperienced trainer. Anyone who got to yell at somebody, it, it doesn't know what they're doing now. They, you know, they they're new themselves, especially if they teach you structures. Like if they're kind of like turn this wheel to this much and then turn blah blah blah. If they keep doing that type of shit, they don't they don't know what you're doing. You should be talking to your student and being like, listen, what do you think you need to do now? You're at this point and with the truck, you know, wh what do you need to do and how the truck's gonna react? What do you, you know? I let them tell me so that I know that they're getting it. You know what I mean? Right. But there should be no there should be no screaming at nobody. Like, as far as I'm concerned, that's something I have a real issue with. If I see one of my trainer, like, trainers over here, like, yelling at somebody, like, yo, what the fuck about, I'll grab them. I'll be like, yo, listen, you don't talk to people like that. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, okay. you got you to gotta be professional. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't I don't play that, bro. Like, we're all grown. You know what I mean? Like, we're grown men. You know, I'm not your son. If he didn't just become your son, you know what I mean? You're here to teach him. And if he's not getting it because you're screaming, then you're the problem. You know what I mean? Like, so... No trainer should be yelling. If you make a mistake and he has to yell at you because you, you're not listening, that's another story. So say, like, you're driving, you're about to crash. Right. And he's like, turn, turn, turn. He's like, turn, turn. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't get mad at him. I mean, he's just trying to save his ass, you know, but part of my friends. But you know what I mean? Like, but in the parking lot or something like that, like, when you're actually trying to learn a maneuver, they shouldn't, they should not yell. No no one should yell. There's a hostile environment. If you, if I, for any student, that feels like they're in a hostile environment, go to the go to the terminal, be like, listen, you don't have to start no problem. Be like, I'm not getting along with this trainer. I don't have a problem with him, like, you know, like that. I just don't want to have one. So can you give me someone else? That's it. Simple as that. If the student doesn't talk, you know what I mean, or open his mouth and it's his own fault a little bit too. You know what I mean? So like if you have an issue and you think that you can't get along with your trainer, just be like, listen, I don't like you. <laughs> don't yell at me or whatever, and I'm just going to get into the trainer and that's it. You know, so, it, you know, sometimes people, you know, just like a relationship, they're not meant to be, <laughs> you know. That's what's up, man, because, you know, when I was with uh, my my first trainer, yeah, the, the the relationship between me and my, and I have mentioned this several times in previous videos, that me and my first trainer, no, no, uh, you know, no shots fired to the young man or nothing like that. I I probably under you know, now that I'm five years deep, I probably understand more of his situation than now as I knew then. You know what I'm saying? You know, he was yeah. brand he was brand new into the system, like fresh. Like like he I was his first trainee, all right? So, yeah, okay. you know, me and him, me and him brand new in the system. All right. So yeah. the first couple of days was awesome. But then, you know, it started 
going a little bit downhill. You know, he was more interested in making his money, you know, because he just came off of, uh, you know, it came off of the holidays and he, his money problems was, was all mish mush and all like that. He just jumped into a lease program with uh, U.S. Express and, you know, his checks was like in the negative and, you know, he thought getting into the program would be, um, will be a saving ah. grace for him and all like that, and it just, it just didn't work out for him. And then, like I said, down, you know, later down the line, you know, it, it was, you know, the the relationship between me and him just wasn't clicking. It wasn't like, it wasn't like I wasn't listening. It was like, you know, I'm, I'm brand new to this. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get a feel on how to turn, when to turn, driving in the, you know, driving in the, driving the truck on traffic. Am I, do I got the right of way? How do I push people out the way so I can get over? You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Oh, I understand. Yeah, stuff like that that he already knows, you know, but I'm trying, I'm trying to learn it, you know? And then, like I said, that, that fateful day I was in Georgia, it was a uh, four lane. It was four lanes of traffic, and I'm over here like s- still sitting there, you know, trying to go. You know what I'm saying? And that's what he's like. Okay, bro, we gotta, we gotta get going. We gotta get going. We gotta get going. I'm like, okay. So I start inching, 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 and then it was like, yo, bro, we gotta go. And you know, and I was like, you know, let me pull over right quick, get my sanity. And I was like, look, man, don't holler at me, <laughs> okay? Hollering yeah, it can get worse off. Right. Yeah. Hollering at me is only going to make it worse, bro. All right. Uh, you know, I let me let me apologize because like I said, maybe I stood in, I mean, stood over there a little bit longer than expected, but but don't holler at me. So, you know, the next trainer after that was pretty good, but yeah, I think hollering, I I think hollering and screaming at these at these young jacks i can understand now if they're not listening like 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 you said if they're not listening then yeah that's 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 something that you you should take back to uh the fleet manager and just say yo this young man's not listening he's not paying attention to me uh i had to raise my voice at him a few times i don't think it's gonna work let him go with somebody else but if you're going to come like as a cocky trainer, then I think that's going to be the worst experience because I've read so far, I read in the comments right here, like, like some of these guys over here talking about over here talking about, well, this is my truck, my rules. And, and if he don't like it, get off, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, you know, let me step, let me, I, I understand you trying to establish some type of of rules, I guess. I mean, I can understand that, but still, you know, you're a grown man. I'm a grown man. You're a grown man. Let's let's respect each other as grown men. You know what I'm saying? There's there's a way to talk to me, bro. Yeah. It's it's a sad thing when you when you know it's like you know some of these people they come from wherever they come from they don't have an education whatever it is you know what I mean that's fine you know what I mean but they get into this this position and they get a little sense of power and they just abuse it you know what I mean right and sometimes they don't even they don't even deserve to be a trainer you know what I mean they're still learning themselves you you know like if you don't understand like everything like you know you can't. You can't take a student out and then get into a situation where you can't get it out, out of it because you don't know – you still don't know what the hell you're doing. You make yourself look stupid, and then you got two people that don't know what the hell they're doing. It's like the blind leading the blind. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's that's the one thing you, you don't want, you know? But, that's... you know, students on, students on the other side, they can't use that, I'm going to get another trainer as a weapon either because you get the wrong trainer that they know that they know. Like someone like me, like if you if you, if you try to play, play me, like they, they already know I won't yell. It's a big thing on me. You know, I, I've trained everybody from Africa, Somalia, Congo, I've, all different languages. I, I didn't get along with other people, and I've taken them. Because I'm real neutral. Like, I'm very cool. Mm-hmm. You see me, I don't know if you see me, like, do my stupid little Instagrams. I have fun with my guys. You know what I mean? I take them to strip clubs, whatever. You know what I mean? Right. I play poker. You know what I mean? 
whatever you want to do, let's go have fun. Like, you know, this is about having fun. You doing the trucking, you could do anything you want. Like I, tro- I, I went to, I went to Texas and I went hunting. I went boar hunting. I, I parked the damn truck. I found a place. Boom, boom, boom. My boys met me. I went pig hunting. In the middle of freaking no, I never been to Texas boar hunting. You know, I mean, you can do whatever the hell you want. Like you, the, the world is at your fingertips. You know, you just got to pay attention and 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 try to you know master your trade. And don't don't try to get too good too good too quick either. So when you start learning stuff and you, and you like you're trying to whip that truck fast and stuff, that's the biggest biggest mistake you could possibly do, especially when you park nice and easy, nice and slow. Nobody's gonna respect you on the field if they see you trying to move all quick and and, and crazy in the damn park line just because you want to make yourself look good and try to get it in with a one shot, one shot done. You know, like you'll see people all crooked and messed up and they're trying everything and they don't want to do a pull up, they want to do it in one shot. That makes you look like an amateur, straight off the bat, like right off the get go, you know. Cause, where, where do you, up? where, where do you see, uh, do? Well, let me ask you this, because backing, it's easy. I, I always say it's easy to drive a truck. You know what I'm saying? It's easy. In the street, it is. Yeah, it's easy <laughs> to drive a truck. Backing is the issue. I mean. I'm five years deep in the game. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I don't like blindside. I think, and I think blindside, well, I guess blindside is like everybody's clutch. You know what I'm saying? But I don't like blindside. If I have help blindsiding, cool, I can get it in. But, you know, I'm I'm out of my truck like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten yeah. at a you time. Yeah, you better be out of your truck. <laughs> You know what I'm saying to get that to get that blind side in, but uh, you come to a truck stop, you come to a truck stop, and you see, you you see veteran drivers having problems backing up. You know what I'm saying? You see these guys yeah. out here. You see these guys out here trying to get in that last impossible spot. You know what I'm saying? So. Do you think sometimes it's the only one left? (laughs) Yeah. Do you think uh, now? Do you think now? Not while it's crowded or nothing like that. But do you think like during the day, in your opinion, some of the guys that's even after they you know come off a trainer's truck, do you still suggest that they should use the the truck stop parking lots to to practice their backing? No. No, no. <laughs> Me like when I when my students like if you don't like if you're out of your truck like if you want to practice like you know if you could do it and you're not in anyone's way like, all right you know what I mean but if you're still kind of slow with it no like do do it do it in your own yard if you bump a trailer no one's gonna know <laughs> you know what I mean don't mm-hmm. do whatever you know what I mean mm-hmm. you don't want to do it you don't want to do it in a public environment because you got people that don't care and you got people that also have messed up trucks that maybe they hit a wall or something mm-hmm. and they're going to pull right next to you so you back right into them boom like oh oh look at the damage you did now you got to pay for it you know what I mean mm-hmm. don't trust nobody dude you need to do that in your yard like so when, when I train my students I don't let them par- park in public environment like if we go to shipper mm-hmm. he's not parking I park it but I make sure as a trainer that when I get to one of my yards maybe yards everywhere that we spend three four hours just strictly parking you know what I mean? I, I I take the time to make sure that they know what they're doing. Other trainers strictly only do it when they get to places like this. Mm-hmm. You know, but if you sit there and make them, the thing about learning how to park good is being re, being able to do it repetitively. So if you could do it in your yard and and try it one time and then, and then do it and try to figure out what's going on where you messed up, go back around in the circle and do it again and do it again and do it again until you master it. You know what I mean? And just keep doing it. You'll until you get it and you understand everything and you understand how to use your tandems. To steer where you need to be and then hook it, you know, and then learn how to pivot. If you don't, if you don't understand that, you need to keep practicing and keep practicing and pre- keep practicing until you understand it. You, you, you know what I mean? Oh, okay, that's what's up. That's but, what's but, up. I, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it in a public environment just because of the risk. You know what I mean? You got too many things, you know. So was was night transportation your first stop? How how old are you? Because this is another segue question. But how how old are you, how old were you when you got into uh, when you got into trucking? Well, I'm 41. I've been I'm in my sixth year right now. I'm five and a half years into it, so I must yeah. I'll be November being my sixth year complete. All right, so 41. So, so try six. You was like what 30 something. Yeah, 30 something. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, dude, I, whatever, my math sucks, bro. Listen, when I, I was an electrician before this. I was an electrician, and then I went to acting. And then, um, and then uh, I got hit by a cab. So, like, and, and I couldn't do heavy work no more. So I needed to get a job, and I just, that's how I kind of just ended up in it. My, my homeboy, Alan, you know Alan. We talked on the thing. Right, right, he, right. Uh, we're, we're he was the, doing it 14 years. He's, like, 14, 15 years into it, on operator. So he was, like, go to the trucking, go to the trucking. I was, like, I don't know if I was on the damn trucking. So I looked up for a local gig, and, like, I told you, I ended up with England. Uh-huh. So I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I just picked a company and went with it, you know? But thank God they didn't have a big contract. But once I got done with them, I came the night. So the night's been good to me. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. So you but, like, s- when I first started, my trainer crashed the truck, too. So, like, we talked about that before. And that's the reason why I really paid attention. I, I was on my P's and Q's, you, you know what I mean? I so, wanted to learn everything. So you started So you started with, uh, with CR England. How, how, yeah, yeah, yeah. So was you? Uh, so you went through there. You went through there. Uh, school. You went through their school. Yeah, I went through their school. I drove about nine months, and then they they sent me to uh, to their certification class. It's actually another month of training. Uh, where I had to learn uh, the DMV structure of road testing. I had to learn how to do all that. So I became a road tester. I you know got certified as a trainer, all that stuff, but. Uh, I could be in the yard. I can get you. You know, when you go to school and they, the dudes testing you to give you your license, and they do the road test. I was one of those guys. You know what I mean? So, I know I know it like to the T. I know the whole structure of a DMV road test. So I mean, if you get me as a as a trainer, I could I teach you everything. Like I know okay. exactly how they want you to drive. Yeah, you know what I mean. Okay. So let me ask you this question because I came across this uh, this comment too. Um, what do you What do you think that the guys that's interested that's interested that's coming into trucking at a young age uh do you suggest they start like right off the rip instead of waiting until they're like 20 21 if they're 18 and 19 do you suggest that they get into trucking right then and there i can uh, you have to be 21 to drive the combination i don't know about like the little things but uh i don't know i don't know about the local stuff I, i know you have to be 18, 21. 18, 18, you can drive local. Uh, you just can't, local, yeah. I was gonna say local, you can't, but not, you can't, yeah, you can't okay. drive in what is it, intrastate? Mm-hmm. You can't, in, no, interstate, yeah, no, inter, in, no, no, it's a, inter, no, it's a, interstate, yeah, yeah, interstate, you can't drive, but you can drive intrastate because it's in the state. You yeah. can't, you can't leave the state at the age of yeah. 18. Now, they're trying, they're trying to, uh, what do you they they try to lift it i believe that they're trying to lift it but as of right now you you can't leave the state but i think that at the age of, at the age of 18 19 if you guys is interested in getting your license at that age i i suggest that you guys do it um you can like get like a local job um maybe pepsi coca-cola maybe a beer truck or or, yeah they'll be straight trucks though right you know they're not they're not combinations right um or you can get uh one of these uh uh spotter um a spotter truck uh job you know where you know you or yard dogs oh yeah the yard dogs that's where the spotter trucks come in at i think if they go that route especially if they do that for about a year year or two I think they back the in, now. Yeah, they're back in the be yeah. on point. They back that's how in, I that's how I park like a yard dog. I'm like rrr, rrr. I was like, oh shit. All right. So this other guy, I came I came across this question right here. Uh let but me But real add, quick, let me just let me add on to the cherry on that one, that last one. I mm-hmm. recommend that anyone who doesn't have a good job, if you're gonna really if you start young, you're gonna have a lot quick. Cause you can make money in this game and you just got to be on point and listen to, you know, pay attention to what you're doing and mm-hmm. get good at what you do. And mm-hmm. you start young, you know, it's more money than a young kid can spend. I guarantee that. So exactly. I mean, I would recommend it cause it's, it's a career, you know, but it's a sacrifice too. So don't, you know, keep that in mind. Exactly. Okay, go. All right. So right here, man, uh, this guy right here in the, uh, what, which one is this? Uh, CDL for life. Hold on right quick. I'm hitting the wrong button. There we go. In CDL for life, he says, hey, y'all, what's up? 
He says, I have a few questions. I just got my CDL in November. I'm from Florida, and I work for Trans Am. Now, he's already driving, by the way. But I want to get, I mean, he said, you want to go to a better company. The only problem is, is the lack of experience and his driving record. He has a speeding ticket, a red light ticket, and driving with suspended license. And he's also a convicted felon. God damn it, man. <laughs> he said, do you guys, wow. he said, do you guys have any tips for me? Is there, is there a way to get my driving record cleaned so that I can get with a better company or do I got to stick it out with Trans Am? What, what do you think about, what do you, what do you think I, about well, that? He's got one speeding ticket. How many speeding tickets do you have? He, said, he, said, he says he got one, well, it, he just said a speeding ticket. He didn't say how many, but he said a speeding ticket, a red light ticket, and driving with a suspended license. All right, so he's already, he's like he can't even come to my company. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, if you have, if you have two two moving violations, which he just mentioned, if you have two moving violations in one, or I think year and a half or two years, uh -huh. that's it. You're automatically terminated until one of them falls off. Um. Also, two actions will avoid you from being able to work for us. Uh, a lot of the companies the same same thing. Like so, you you know, as, if you're gonna hold the CDL, mm -hmm. all that stupid Fast and the Furious stuff needs to stop. You know what I mean? You need you need to pay attention to what you're doing. That that license is your your money, your lifeline, your gold, everything. As long as you carry a CDL, you can get hired anywhere quick. You know, you need to protect that with all costs, everything. Like so. He needs my recommendation. He needs to stay with his company, wait a year or two, let those like uh, three years. It stays in your license for three years. You got to wait until that one of those things fall off, and then just it doesn't hurt to try to take a shot and see if you get a job somewhere else. If they say no, they say no. You're still in the same position. You know what I mean? Just just keep toughing it out, and, and I would just you know, you got to wait for something not to fall off because it ain't looking good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you gotta yeah, be happy even have yeah, a job. he got he got to <laughs> he definitely got to wait, man. But you know, like I say, he hit the. I would say he hit the trifecta, but he hit the full fecta. <laughs> yeah, he's and a also like, what, what, why, why, why is it not a good job? For him? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what, what's the, what's the problem? Is he not making enough money? Well, you There's know, one way to handle that. Well, you know, he needs to go step up and say something. Ask him. Be like, hey, listen, can I get a raise? Like, straight up, open your mouth. Well, you know, you know, trans, I, mean? you know I called Trans Am back in the day. A lot of people is not fans of Trans Am uh, trucking. So they, you know, but this is the only company that gave him his opportunity. So I guess it's like a loyalty based type deal, because if he's trying to get with any other company, yeah, he's going to have a problem uh, getting in with any other company. So, yeah, my suggestion, I, I, I would suggest that he stay with uh, stay with Trans Am, try to rock it out for at least two maybe three years you know where where it could you know your your stuff could succeed and then you'll get a get a um get a better rapport with the company make sure you do some safe miles you know what i'm saying and then when you yeah. come you know when you come for another company you can say hey this is what i had in the past but this is what i did now you know maybe they'll give you uh you don't even have to say it. They're gonna see it. <laughs> exactly. They're gonna. They, they're gonna see it. <laughs> they're gonna see everything without you saying. Exactly. All right, man. Before I get on up out of here, man, you mentioned the fact that you uh, did some movies, man. Well, you did a uh, couple yeah. of you did a couple of TV shows, and um, and this uh, I'm still... this Law and Order joint right here that I got up, man. Uh, episode oh, yeah. <laughs> episode sixteen. I don't, I can't find I can't find the video. I know you I know you sent me the video, but I can't I can't pull it from my phone over to my computer. But uh, yeah, this I you know the episode. This is the uh, this is the episode that you guys should check them out in. It's episode uh, season sixteen, episode twelve. The name of it is oh, Mario oh. deals with Daddy Dearest. Uh, this is the episode where his father had to go to court for some reason. I definitely got to go back and, and check it out. But my man D. Nitty is sitting in the jury pool. 
<laughs> no, no, I'm not. I mean, I'm in the, I'm in the witness. Or not the, like with the stand is with the lawyers and and with the witnesses. Yes, sir. There he is. I went back after the conversation. I went back and found the clip, which I will play for you guys right now. But that is him sitting with Olivia Benson and Detective Amaro. Check out the clip. Yep, there he is. Sorry about the sound, y'all. Unfortunately, the clip uh, transferred over without the sound. But there he is, my man D. Nitty, sitting right there in the uh, courtroom with uh, Detective Amaro and Detective Benson, you know, paying attention to uh, what's going on. And uh, there's the prosecutor, there's the jury, that's the, that's the person of interest, I guess. So, yeah, yeah, this episode right here, you guys should check it out. I'll leave the uh, I'll leave the link and the information to the episode in the uh, description below. So the, the cop that, the one cop that, you know, because that's his father, the cop. Oh, okay. I mean, the cop was, Amon Asante was his father, the cop. Right. So I'm in the, I'm sitting next to him. I'm part of their family. The jury's on the right. Okay. I'm in the, I'm, I'm in the, you know, like when you stand in the booth, like with the lawyers and stuff, and that side, I'm, I'm with them. So you, wait, that's my first, that's my first Wait, I, wait, I, first I thought gig. that, wait, wait a minute, I thought that was a jury. You, that was a jury. You wasn't. No, the jury's on the right. Where I was, I'm with the cops. You know, like the main act, the main actresses and shit. Right. Part of my French, but yeah, I'm with them. I'm, in, I'm inside next to the, the Law and Order chick and the other detectives. Oh, okay. I'm right there. I, I, I was supposed to be a, a detective, but I, I came with a nice suit and they didn't have a wardrobe. They were a nice suit. I said, "Yeah, we got a nice suit." So I brought like the best one I had, and it was like too nice. They're like, "This is law and order." It's like a regular broke down cop from New York, not a mob boss. I was like, "Oh man!" And they put me in this in this situation. You know what? <laughs> let, let me see if you know. Right now, I'm about to. I'm, I'm heading over to YouTube right quick. Let me let me see if I can actually. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me see if I. You gotta can. go to the end. It's at the end, the court scene. So basically, like his wife, he his wife got knocked out or something like that, and he was trying to talk. I don't know what what the deal was. I didn't even watch that episode, to tell you the truth. And then, uh, so they they thought his father was the one who beat his wife, so he's going to court, like testifying against his dad, trying to put him in jail and everything. But then they find out that he's innocent. Well, I I brought up, well, you know how YouTube is, man. Hey, I I brought up I brought up this. Maybe I'm. I brought up a few, a few, but like I said, I, I can't, I can't find the, uh, I, I can't find the, the, uh, the, the actual, you, like I said, you sent me the video. Let me, let me see if I can. It's at the end. You gotta go all the way to the end. It's like oh, the last five minutes. Hold on. I, let me, you, you sent me the video. Let me see if I can, uh, if I can bring the video up on my, on my phone very quick. That video sucks. I was walking by. I was walking by a store and I seen it. I was like, "Oh my god, is that episode on there?" And I was like, "Dude, I just recorded it real quick, so it's kind of like blurry." But just yeah, it won't even it won't it won't even come up for some odd reason, man. But anyway, um, are you still a uh, part of the? Yeah, I, g- I guess yeah. the Actors Guild or something like. Do you? Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do you? Do you still get paid for them reruns? No, 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 no. Movies. If I was like starring in a movie, yeah, you get you get royalty. But yeah. uh, but, yeah, yeah, I don't get none of that crap. No way. Nah, that was just, that was my first my first thing. I'm hired with Central Casting, so I'm one of their actors. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm benched at the moment because I have to take a stupid sexual harassment class that's mandatory. Right. And I haven't done it, so they they called me for Law and Order last time when I was in New York. Remember I just talked to you? Right. They they called me they're like, yo, we need you for Law and Order. I was like. And then they call me back, like, you didn't do your sexual harassment class, so we can't use you. Get that done. I was there. I was like, damn. Wow. <laughs> so will you, be, will, you, will you be able to, will you be able to, uh, will you be able to. Yeah, they uh, sent me the link. Oh, okay. So I you just, do it. you just got to do it online. Yeah, I did Lucy Lou. I did elementary, I did the elementary with Lucy Lou once. I did Mr. Robot's first, first episode, the pilot of Mr. Robot. Oh, okay. I did, uh, what else did I do? I did Blue Bloods, Blacklist. I did LFE Pilot. Like a pilot, I was playing an orderly. Okay. You know okay, what I mean? Okay. Uh, I was on Louis C.K. I was on a whole bunch of stuff. So one how, year is just like. So how how's how how do you get? Well, I'm not trying to be nosy and nothing like that, but 
Dude, so they, so you get you you get paid by the agency or you get paid by? No, I get paid straight from Law and Order. I get paid for whoever I work for. That that I get. If you go on my Facebook, you see a check. Like you'll see, it's Entertainment Partners. It's actually oh, hold on they're all affiliated. Quick. Hold on, right quick. You say hold on, right quick. You say, hold on. Let me. It's in your photo. Fo- it's in your photos. Yeah, uh, let me put you on speaker. I'll tell you exactly where to look. Hold on a second. Okay. All right, so I'm looking. It says D. It say photos of D and D's photos. So should it be? Hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. I gotta pull it up myself because like I can't remember. My memory sucked. A little longer than a few minutes later. Oh, wait, 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 wait! I think I found it. If you go to time, no, 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 no. I found it. I found it. I found it. It's on timeline. Yeah, no, okay. yeah, I found it. I found it. There it is. This. So this is the. Entertainment partners. Yeah. Uh, pay exactly blank. Play. <laughs> there must be some. Had to. Must must be some good ass cheese if you got it covered up, bro. <laughs> 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 yeah, that must be some. Uh, that must be some good money right there if you got it covered up, man. <laughs> yeah, I just. Uh... <laughs> Uh, it was all right. <laughs> it's not as good as, as some people's in that damn place because I I seen some people's checks because they when you're there you see the list it tells you how much everyone's getting paid and right. like Ice T was getting like seventeen thousand dollars for the episode I was like holy crap okay I wish I was um, yeah, it's crazy I'm scrolling I'm scrolling back ne- right next to that right next to that you see the picture of me I don't know if you are uh, in the actual courthouse. Oh wait 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 wait! Is, is it the same? Right, two pitches over. Hold on, I don't know if it's the one you got. No, I'm scroll. I'm scrolling back down. I, I I scrolled up because I wanted to ask you something about uh, the towers. Uh, yeah, there you is, right here. There you is. Okay, yeah, there you is, right there. <laughs> like I said, I got I got to go back. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. They they don't see it because I got to look. There you go. That's him right there, y'all. My man D Nitty right there. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so like I said, I gotta go back. I gotta go back and uh, I gotta go back and uh, watch that uh, episode. All right. So, let me ask you this because I I seen you had a, I seen you had a, a pictures of uh, of of the towers. Where yeah. where were you? Uh, where were you when when the towers came down? I was waiting. I was about to jump on an airplane later on that day because my birthday's on the 18th of September. So I was actually flying in from Georgia to New York. I was visiting my father, and then um, I was actually coming back over. And then my friend called me because, "Yo, the tower just got hit with a plane. Put on TV." I'm like, "Get the hell out of here!" And I was already thinking something funny. You know what I mean? Right. My girlfriend's a survivor. She was in that tower. What? Uh, my wife. Yeah, and her sister. So, oh my God. So. Yeah, it's crazy. But uh, so I put on the TV, and then um, I'm looking at it. Dude, I, there's something about those towers. It, 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 it's a part of you. Like I don't know what it is, but that made New York. Like now, New York just looks like a. It doesn't even look like New York anymore. I mean, yeah, it's, it, up, it's, but, uh, I, it's iconic. You know, if if you go back to yeah. like some of the old school videos. Uh, yeah, you got some, on my Instagram. I got nice pictures, like it was yeah. all like the sun was hitting. They look gold. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I, it's up. I got it on a. I got it on my green screen. If you go, if you go and and check out some of the old school videos, some of the old school <clears throat> Biggie videos, some of the old school uh, uh, Grandmaster Flash videos, you you'll see these iconic towers in the background, and it, and of course. Yeah. Of course, if you go back to any of the old school Law and Orders, I'm not talking about uh, the S. Well, yeah, SVU too. But if you go back and watch any of the old school Law and Orders, they they have these iconic towers in all, man. And it's yeah. just, yeah, the New York skyline without these towers, man, is just, oh man. But I, where yeah. was where was I? I I was um. Actually, I I used to own a I used to own a record shop. Actually, I used to own two record shops in uh, Cleveland, and uh, I was at the I was I was at the warehouse picking up uh, picking up my stock, and yeah, the um, the first plane they they showed a video of the first plane 
crashing into a tower. I thought it was, I, I thought it was a movie. <laughs> to be honest with you, but oh my you God. know the guy was like, "Yo, no, that that just happened." And then all of a sudden, another plane went into the towers, and I was like, "Whoa, what's going on?" And then, yeah, you know, after all that said is, after all that said and done, people still don't realize that it was four planes that attacked, uh, that attacked America that day. Because everybody was just concentrating on the three, the uh, the two that ran into the towers, and Pentagon. and and the one not the Pentagon, but the one that went down over in Pennsylvania. Ninety three, right? They Flight ninety three, yeah. right? They was all concentrating on that one, but yeah, don't forget the Pentagon. That one that was yeah. in PA, man. If them people hadn't have did what they done. That plane was heading straight for the White House. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. That yeah, that that plane, that you know, those, you know, rest rest in peace. And I, you know, I'm glad they did what they did. They all knew that they they all knew they was gonna die anyway. And um and yeah, you know, they, they, they 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 came. They should have went for them when it first happened. Like every single one of them. Everyone that is if you're just a little bit of advice for everybody, if it if any if you're on a plane and someone says I'm hijacking that thing, rush his ass. That's it. <laughs> rush him, dude. <laughs> you say rush. Do this. <laughs> rush him, bro. Take him out. Who gives a shit if he blows you blow up? You're gonna die. Like, take take him out, bro. Take him out. Don't even uh, hesitate. I tell my girl all the time, I said, do it. When she comes to visit me, I said, yo, if anyone does anything stupid, what do you do? She goes, rush him. I'm like, good girl. <laughs> 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 sound like my sound like my dude from uh from uh baby kids. Rush him. <laughs> Get him, Debo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But man, uh yeah. yeah. Well, D Nitty man, I appreciate the time. I you know, this uh some great conversation, man. Uh yeah, you oh. guys could you guys could check out my man D Nitty. He does have a have a Instagram, it's D Nitty, right? Yeah, same thing. Yeah, D-Nitty, yeah. Yeah, yeah D-Nitty. Right, go on your friends and then look me up. Yeah. If they D- need a job, let me know. I can, I can work it out for them. That's not a problem, man. If anybody interested in night transportation, definitely get, get at me in my Gmail, lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com. I can hook you I can hook you up with my man D-Nitty right here. He could give you a little bit more advice, a little bit more information about night transportation. And uh, mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah, man. So like I said, I'm about to go ahead and uh, go ahead and edit up this video so I can go ahead and get it out. But uh, I definitely wanted to talk to him, being that he was a trainer. And uh, I appreciate you coming on, bro. Definitely, always. All I right, man. You where, where where you at? Where you at? Before I let you go, I'm in Salt Lake City. I just got here. My zone, my ELD is jacked up i've been straight driving it, it won't shut off drive time so for three weeks i've been in violation as oh. far as the logs say on the eld yeah but i have paper logs i'm on oh, paper you, i can't oh you rock it. it oh you rocking well, until yeah. you get it all right are, is I'm there going old right is now. there is there <laughs> is there um is there a terminal where you can get your truck in and get it looked at or that's where i'm at right now Oh, okay. Yeah. What you, what you, what you, you said you, uh, ELD. What, what are you, PeopleNet or Qualcomm? No, I'm not on any of that. I'm on Zonar. Oh, that's, okay, Zonar? Zonar, Zonar is a tablet. So it's a, it's a, it used to be A B O R D. Oh, okay, you know, yeah. That, recording device. Yeah. But now it's an ELD. So, like, it used to say A B O R D. Now it says property of the U.S. government. <laughs> oh, get <laughs> out. Yeah, that's how that's <laughs> how ours is. We used to be on A, what is it? A R E A R L D. A B O R D. A D L. Yeah, that's what we was on before. And we, um, we board just. recording device. Yeah. A B O R D. Yeah, we just, we just switched over to ELDs. Ours just say ELD. <laughs> yeah. And, and the bottom it says property of U.S. government on the logs, like the logs they own or something like that. It's crazy. It's weird. All right, brother, man. Yeah. Well, we about to get on up out of here. You guys take it easy. If you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. My name is Lockout Men, and I appreciate you guys being here. Yo, we out. D, I'll talk to you later, bro. Later, brother. Peace. Peace.